Disposable Heroes by Metallica is one of my favorite tunes off of Master of Puppets, but unfortunately, thanks to a whole bunch of fake news tabs and covers out there, there's a whole lot of misinformation about how to play a handful of key parts in this song. So on today's episode of Weekend Wank Shop, we're going to break them down. Don't forget, when James says back to the front, he's not talking wiping directions. Hey there kids, and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Here's your best buddy, Uncle Ben. Disposable Heroes by Metallica is the perfect song to learn if you want to improve your rhythm playing and speed picking chops, but unfortunately there are a whole lot of bad tabs for it floating around, including that absolute garbage tab book that they printed a million years ago whenever the record came out. So in my unending quest to right the wrongs of bad tabs all over the multiverse, I did my usual amount of deep diving and you know poured over the isolated guitar and bass tracks of this song as well as watched about a million different live videos of the band playing this song in concert over the past couple decades to provide for you guys the most accurate transcriptions possible. Although I will admit, I am still kind of guessing on that one part that James plays during Kirk's solo. And as always, you guys can find full tabs for all of these riffs over on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitar. Search for hashtag WeekendWankShop219, learn these riffs, then upload a video of yourself shredding through them along with the hashtag WeekendWankShop. And of course, if you guys like what you see here, you can support me on Patreon by clicking the link in the video description below. Thanks. Okay, first thing that we're going to talk about today is the picking pattern that you need to be using whenever you're playing that main rhythmic figure that you hear in the intro of the song and through the verses. Now, the pattern that you're going to be doing is like this. One and a two and three and four and a one and a two and three and and as far as the pick strokes go, it's going to be like this. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. And it's essential to play it that way, otherwise you're going to have upstrokes landing on down beats and stuff like that, and it just doesn't sound right. Next thing we've definitely got to talk about is the super fast 16th note riff that appears several times throughout the song, like during the pre-chorus with the Soldier Boy made of clay part. Now, that part right there has a little bit of a pull-off in it that most people don't notice. Most people think that it's just a static, like, C-sharp power chord like this. But that's not the case. If you listen every other time on the accent, you'll hear that basically the A string goes up here to fret 5 and does a pull-off to fret 4. So in other words, you're kind of holding down this uh, C-sharp power chord here, 4th A, 6th on the D. And you'll notice that the first time that you accent it, it's just a power chord, then the root note palm muted, and then this next time, see I went up here to the 5 on the A and hit that and did a pull off like that. I'll play it kind of slow and you can really tell. But every time you're playing that riff, even whenever it moves positions down to like B later on in the song or to the A in the open position, just remember that every other time through, you're going to be adding in a little pull-off accent like this. Now several times in the song after that super fast 16th note riff, there's this little ending tag that they put in there that sounds like this. And I've seen this transcribed a lot of different ways. Sometimes they put the right notes on there, but just in the wrong position. I want to show you guys the positions that I've seen James and Kirk play this in live videos. 
Now, basically what you're gonna do here is to start off with a very heavily palm muted open A, and then play the five here on the D and slide that down to four. Again, you'll see this hand position shift whenever you watch and play this live. It's pretty indicative that there is a slide taking place right there. So I got my A, then my slide from five to four on the D. Then hit another open A. Sometimes people mistake that for an E note or something like that, but it's another A. Then you gotta play this run. So this is my fourth D, seventh A, fifth A, fourth A, okay? So notice that basically all the A string stuff there was palm muted. And then you have a series of power chords. So this is a G up here on three and five, bottom strings. F sharp, so just move down a fret to two and four. An E, so now we're doing open and two on the bottom strings. And then we're gonna go to some power chords here on A and D. You got a D, which is five and seven. C sharp, which is four and six. And then a B, which is two and four. Okay, so that entire transition sounds like this. Notice that the power chords at the B was the only one that was not palm muted. Okay, next thing that we're gonna talk about here is the riff that James is playing behind Kirk's solo. Now this is just kind of a continuation of the bridge riff. Which is another one of the most like badly tabbed riffs in Metallica history. I actually have a whole video that's just about that riff. It's Weekend Wank Shop 179, if I recall. So if you want to get all the details about that, be sure to check that episode out. But essentially, whenever it goes to Kirk Solo, James continues playing a little variation on that riff with some in-between stuff on like a C. And then this little harmonized thing that Again, this is a little bit of guesswork. I'll explain whenever I get to that part. So first, let's talk about the pull off -y power chord -y part. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting off with an E power chord, open on the E, two on the A. I'm chugging on that E. And then I'm going up here to five and seven on the bottom string. This is an A power chord. Hit that power chord and then do a pull off with your first finger here. So you're going, okay. Notice I didn't pull off the ring fingers, just the first finger pulling off to the open E. Two chugs, then do a G, three and five on the bottom strings with that same pull off treatment. Two chugs, do an F sharp, two and four with the same pull off. And you're gonna have two more chugs. So it's E, A, G, F sharp. That's kind of the first part of what James is playing behind there. Now, after they go through that pull off power chord riff a few times, there's kind of the majestic break where James plays a C on three and five A and D strings. Yanks it up a whole step to a D, that's five and seven. And then takes it back down to a C, three and five. Now, there's a little thing that James plays at the end of this. And again, on the original recording, it's impossible to hear it. The lead that Kirk is playing is so loud. There's usually like a drum fill going on. But again, if you listen to the isolated bass track, you'll hear this little walk down. Just walking down the E minor scale like that. And if you watch James live, you'll see his hands kind of doing a little position shift like this right here. That's actually what kind of clued me in on it first. As I was watching, I was like, what are his hands doing? I couldn't hear it on any recording of it. So then I, uh, you know, again, hunted out the bass recording and you can hear Cliff doing this walk. So this is just kind of a guess, but I'm assuming that James is following Cliff's walk that he plays down here. Okay, so again, we got C, D, C, and then this little walk down, which is the third fret A, second fret A, open A, and then the third low E, okay? It might even be power chords. It's very hard to say. Again, that's a guess right there. Before we go back to this. Riff. Now there's a part at the end of the solo section where instead of doing the C's, uh, James joins in on this little harmonized scene to catch what Kirk is doing when he starts playing that. Kind of anthemic thing right there. And again, this is slightly a guess. This is me being kind of informed by the record, which is kind of hard to pick out. 
as well as hunting down a bunch of live recordings and stuff. Now the part that I'll play you first here is what James usually plays live. He's playing the fifth fret here on the A string, hammering on to seven, and then we're gonna play kind of a series of pedal tones like this. <laughs> That kind of makes this nice harmony with what Kirk is playing. So again, I'm hitting the 5 on the A, hammering to 7, then I'm picking that note again. Then I'm going to play the 5 here on the D, back to that 7th A, two times. I'm going to do the accent note this time on the 7th D, back to your 7th A. Then the 9th D, back to that 7th A. So you're kind of outlining just like that. Now the other part that I put on my recording of it is what I think is going on, which would be like a third harmony on that. And because uh, again on the record it's very hard to tell, but it sounds like there's another lower guitar going. <laughs> I might just be completely imagining that right there, so I'm not going to swear by that. I'll put it on the tabs and stuff. And again, that's the same idea, just somewhere else in the scale. So I'm hitting the seventh fret low E string, hammering to eight. That's my C note right there. And my accent notes this time on the A string are going to be seven, nine, and ten. And do it with that same kind of bounce back pedal tone sort of feel, like you did the E part. And the very last part of the song here that I see tabbed out wrong all the time is that little transition that takes place before the last chorus of the song. Now up to this point, before the chorus every other time, we had this little... But here in the last chorus of the song, they kind of add an extra little tag onto it. It sounds like this. It always confused the crap out of me and I could never figure out what notes were going on behind there. But essentially what's going on here is we're playing our B here on two and four on the A and D strings. Take it down a fret here to B flat, one, three. Back to B on two and four. Then you gotta play your C. So I move up a fret here to three and five. Then back to B, two and four. So if you're just following the first finger and its root notes, it's like two, one, two, three, two. Now again, that's the one that you usually play. But what you'll hear on the isolated guitars, after they play that figure, there's an open A that lines up perfectly with this snare hit that Lars does. So be sure to hit that hard palm muted open A after you play the normal chorus figure. Okay, it's barely there, but listen for the snare hit and you'll hear it. So after you hit that little ghost open A, what we're gonna do is essentially pick up where we left off and carry it up chromatically up here to E. And we're going to play the C this time on 3 and 5, down to B at 2, back to C at 3, okay? And then take this up here, we're going to do D at 5 and 7, E flat here at 6 and 8, before we end up at E at 7 and 9. Okay, so you have the first part, then your little ghost A. Play it for you one more time, more slowly. -er. So there you go guys, a riftacular installment of Weekend Wank Shop that's here to enlighten the masses. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new lessons coming at you every single week. Follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. No, yeah. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen on my channel, be sure to support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Thanks again so much for watching. Now get away from this computer and go play some damn guitar. Less clicking, more picking.